We begin tonight with the extraordinarily violent and life-changing attack on 52-year-old Adam Nichols. The former professional footballer was working all hours with his brothers, managing a designer clothes delivery business from an industrial estate in Essex. Adam Nichols and his three brothers run a delivery company from an industrial estate in Purfleet in Essex. They deliver designer clothing to outlets all over the country. I used to be a professional footballer back when I was 17, 18. Played for Ipswich, left Ipswich and went and played out in South Africa for two years. Then came back to England and sustained a bad injury on my knee, at which time my brother's business had sort of started to you know, get bigger. So I went into basically started working with my brothers, which I have done to this day. It's our life. It's, we don't know anything else but the business. So it's the most important thing to us. In the last, say, three to four years, things have got very tough. And it's just been a very hard struggle. Come on. In recent years, to keep costs low, Adam has stayed on site overnight, acting as a security guard. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. You will. His brothers would turn up with fully loaded vans around 4 p.m., ready for the next morning's delivery. It was January the 28th, so it was dark. Obviously, it got dark by half past three. Closed off, it was, yeah, it was quite a cold night. Closed the door and just basically settled down for the night, made myself a cup of tea and um, basically put the telly on. <laughs> Within a second, two people put inside the van. In my head, it's just Adam, get out of the van. You've got to get out of this van. I don't know where his strength come from. Try to run. Just remember this blue light, a vivid, vivid blue light. They were armed with pepper spray and a stun gun. He didn't stand a chance. And I just remember being just the whole body, just people just like kicking me. And then the one from behind, that's when he said, where are the keys? Give us the keys or I will effing kill you. And I remember just going, oh, I have children, I have children. Please do not kill me. Please do not kill me. I have children. I was swallowing blood. And then they lifted me up. And that's when they started taping my face up. Once they started going around across my eyes and then they come around across my nose, I just, they're not gonna stop. I put my thumb in my mouth, and then they went right across my face, and I was struggling to breathe. It's hard to, um, you know, to sort of like get get in the mind of, it, of someone of like, yeah, it's and like your thing what it does me is like I said, even when I was saying. And it wasn't to, it wasn't to stop, it, it was, I was going, oh, I have children, I have children, please do not kill, don't, please don't kill me, I have children, I have children. Nah, didn't mean a thing. Adam managed to crawl under the camper van and held on for dear life, but the attackers didn't stop there. I remember them trying to, they were grabbing my feet and they were trying to drag me out from underneath, but I was just holding on for dear life. And that's when I felt them stamping on my feet. It all went quiet. And I remember laying under the van for about five minutes, which was the most scary, you know, it was the scariest time for me. 
because I couldn't see, I couldn't get the tape off my face. And then I just made a conscious decision that you've got to get, get you know, Adam, you've got to get it from under here. You know, didn't know if they'd gone. And so I did. I just crawled out from underneath it. By this time, they'd stripped me of my clothing. I just, from memory, that you know, I knew where the warehouses were outside, and I knew that if I went so far down, you come to fencing, and right at the beginning of the fencing, there's a gate. <laughs> As I pushed the fence in, the gate opened. What's your emergency? Um, well, I'm, I'm in a lorry parked up and there's a man here with no clothes on. Someone has tied him up with all black tape. He's just saying, help me, help me, help me. One part of you thinks, would it have been easier to give them the keys? But then I think he would have lost his livelihood. So I know for the reason why he protected it. It was the shock of seeing how bad he was when he was laying on the bed, um, intensive care. The amount of violence, never ever seen anything like that before. And his face was, couldn't recognize him. Yeah, I've lost a sight of my left eye. My eye had been pushed back into my face and dropped. The socket that my eye sits in was totally shattered and my eye was only being held on in my face by the muscles. I have to drink out the right hand side of my mouth. From here, totally numb. All this part of my face totally numb, yeah. As brothers, we're, we're trying to think of this future, but also trying to think of our futures as well, so it's really hard. I don't know where it'll go, and I do worry about what will happen to Adam, the people, I can't, can't think what sort of people they are um, to do that to him. Never ever want to wish that upon anyone. You know, in my heart, yeah, they, they would have killed me. They will kill someone, they will. And these people don't, don't they, they shouldn't be out in the streets. They should not be out in the streets. Well, he's right, they shouldn't. Let's speak now to DS Natalia Ross, who is leading the investigation. Totally shocking levels of violence for any normal person to witness, never mind go through. You've got some CCTV you want to show us tonight. Just, just tell us what viewers are looking at now, would you? Yeah, this is CCTV from the entrance to the Ensign Industrial Estate. It shows Adam, who stumbled around 300 yards to get help. He's covered in blood with his head bound. Um, it was January uh, the 28th, around about 7 p.m. this took place. I mean, in a, a big industrial estate, would it, have, would it have been busy that night? There's a vast number of businesses on this industrial estate. Uh, at the beginning of the industrial estate is a Scania lorry park. We'd expect lorry drivers to use it regularly as a rest stop, and we urge any lorry drivers that were in the area that night to contact us. As we heard in the film there from Adam's brother, Mark, these guys didn't get what they came for. No, despite subjecting that Adam to this ordeal, they didn't get what they came for. They used a stun gun on him and CS spray and caused him severe injuries. Um, Adam did say that he thought one of them distinctively had an Eastern European accent, which he felt might be important as well. Um, they used a stun gun, a gun um, they used pepper spray, as you say, and you've also got some more CCTV of, of a car that you think might be important. Tell us about this. We're keen to hear from anyone that might know about this car. It's seen driving onto the industrial estate near to his camper van and leaves again shortly afterwards. We're keen to know who the occupants are. And just briefly, there's a reward here. Yep, the charity Crime Stoppers offer a reward of up to £3,000 for information leading to a conviction. OK, Natalia, for now, thank you very much indeed. Really a horrific level of violence. You saw us. Just look at what these men did to Adam. They are dangerous. As he said, they need to be caught. If you can help in any way, please call the number 0500 600 600. Remember, if you've been a victim of crime, you can call the Victim Support Line on 0808 16 89 111.